Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Fallout 4, indeed the entire Fallout universe, is one filled with strange secrets and incredible mysteries. What's buried beneath Dunwich Boars? How can Mama Murphy see future events? What do the aliens want with us? If you wanted to, you could create an entire YouTube series breaking down some of these questions. I would know because I have. Well, after shifting through literally hundreds of mysteries and Fallout 4 theories, there's one that I personally keep coming back to. One that, for whatever reason, it seems like no one else ever talks about. Not on YouTube or even Reddit and community forums. Despite carrying what seems to be incredible significance on the game's narrative. And that is the question of what do the people of Covenant have to do with Volt 101 and Volt Tech? Believe me, there's a lot of creepy connections here. Far more than just that goat test you may be thinking about. I talked about this subject briefly for a few minutes in one of my five mysteries videos around half a year ago. But there are some new things we found, odd cut content that's been dug up, and there were some considerable things that I had to skip over. I've always wanted to do a full video breaking down all of the elements to this conundrum, assessing the various possible explanations in as detailed a fashion as possible. Many of you will recall that last week I made a similar video on a Skyrim theory, and that did shockingly well from an engagement perspective, so I figure you guys are okay with these. Anyway, without any further ado, let's explore the countless curious connections between the Town of Covenant and the Volt Tech Corporation, and what may be Fallout 4's most puzzling, unsolved mystery. So, Covenant is a small settlement located just south of Wildwood Cemetery. Now, anyone who's ever seen this place can tell you, something isn't right about it. The people inside are all remarkably polite, way kinder than they have any right to be in a world like this. They dress in pre-war clothes, live in pre-war homes, and consume pre-war products. It's like a suburban neighborhood before the bombs fell. It just doesn't make any sense nowadays. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we're even allowed inside of Covenant, well, first we'll have to pass a little test. You see, upon approaching the town for the first time, we'll find its gates shut, and a man named Swanson will introduce himself to us as the guard, informing the sole survivor that he would love to let us in, but not before we pass what he calls the SAFE test. The SAFE test, as we learn, is a verbally administered exam that the people of Covenant demand any who want to visit their humble town take. Evidently, it has a way of rooting out potential ne'er-do-wells and bad influences. If we're able to get enough questions right and pass, we'll be welcomed inside like family. After agreeing to participate, Swanson will tell us to take a seat and we'll begin. However, after he asks us the first couple of questions, anyone who's ever played Fallout 3 before will likely quickly begin to feel a sense of familiarity, as the questions from the SAFE test turn out to be nearly identical to those seen in the GOAT exam. In case you're unaware, the GOAT, or General Occupational Aptitude Test, was an exam created by the Volt Tech Corporation that would be used in Volts to determine the future occupation of that compound's children. It first appeared in Fallout 3, as we were growing up in Volt 101. At age 16, every child in the complex would have to take it, and while we were told it would be used to determine our future occupation in the Volt, from a gameplay perspective, all it really did was help us allocate our skill points. The safe test is basically the GOAT just with all direct references to Vault 101 removed. So, question 4 for instance, which on the GOAT would say, quote, Congrats, you've made the Vault 101 baseball team. Which position would you prefer? Has been changed to instead say, quote, Congrats, you've made the Covenant baseball team. End quote. You get the picture. Nonetheless, here it is, so many miles away from the capital wasteland in the Commonwealth, the GOAT. How'd the Covenant folks get a hold of it? Most people upon realizing this just chalked it up to a simple easter egg by Bethesda, with no real narrative significance, as if this was just a humble nod to Fallout 3 and nothing else. Of course though, we know there's more going on here than that. So no matter your answers on the safe test, you will pass and be allowed into the settlement, as well as granted a bed in the guest house. 
How thoughtful. Everyone here is great, and overall it just feels like we're in pre-war suburbia. Eventually though, you'll be approached by a mercenary stain in the city, named Honest Dan, who explains to the player that he's searching for a missing young girl named Amelia Stockton, who was apparently a part of a trading caravan that left Covenant and never arrived at its destination. Dan promises us some caps if we're able to help him find the girl. Long story short, our investigation will eventually reveal that Covenant isn't quite what it seems after all. The residents of the town have secretly created a large base in the ruins of a nearby sewer, where they have scientists torture, experiment on, and kill suspected synths in a grueling fashion. We will have to fight our way through this compound in an effort to find Amelia. Along the way, a number of terminal entries and holotapes provide us with even more information. Turns out the safe test isn't used to weed out bad individuals like we were told, but it's supposed to determine whether or not someone is a synth. If you fail the test, not only are you denied entry into Covenant, but eventually you'll be kidnapped and taken down here for experimentation. The way the safe test seems to be catching synths is thanks to its fourth question. Quote, you've been selected to join Covenant's baseball team. Which position would you prefer? Synths, apparently, instinctually answer, catcher. The reason this matters is that it appears in the post-war period, most of society has forgotten baseball ever involved catchers, yet synths are still able to, by instinct, answer this way. No matter, nuances aside, towards the back of the compound, we can finally locate Amelia, locked in a cage, but guarded by a Dr. Rosalind Chambers, who will plead with us to allow her to continue her work. Rosalind admits that she's the brains behind this whole operation, and was only inspired to begin an anti-synth crusade after she lost both of her parents to a synthetic attack in Diamond City when she was a young girl over 58 years ago. Yeah, Rosalind's kinda old. After this, she dedicated everything to trying to bring down the Institute. Eventually, her travels led her to Covenant, and she was able to convince the population to join her. Now the town is used as a way to lure people into taking the safe test, so that Rosalind and her fellow scientists have more samples to continue perfecting its methods. Apparently nowadays, Covenant's entire population is made up of people who lost something due to the Institute. The Doctor understands what she's doing is brutal, but it must be done. Mankind must be saved from the Institute, and she believes the only way that can happen is if she's allowed to continue her work and experiments. From here, we can decide to save Amelia anyway, turning Roslyn and the whole Covenant community permanently hostile. Or agree to the Doctor's pleas and let her kill the girl. Either way, we get paid, and the quest will be completed. So, there you have it, the truth behind Covenant. It's a front for an anti-synth kidnapping and spy ring. But where are all of these Volt connections I promised? Well, let's stop for a moment and take a look at the armor worn by the men guarding Covenant's secret compound. Specifically, let's examine the helmets they wear. Zoom in on the front of them, and you can find, ever so faintly, a faded and possibly somewhat painted over Vault Tech logo. This is Vault Tech security armor they're wearing. Not only that, but one of the doctors we can find here, Dr. Blythe, is wearing an actual, unaltered Vault Tech lab coat. Critically, I should mention, even Dr. Chambers wears a lab coat with a Vault Tech logo, but the one she's wearing isn't actually a Vault Tech lab coat. In the game's files, it's supposed to be a generic coat, but there's a bug impacting her that causes the logo to be displayed anyway. I digress. No matter. There seems to be a lot of Volt Tech gear distributed around the compound. This is just the tip of the iceberg, though. Because on the walls of this place, players can find numerous posters containing questions and graphics from the GOAT exam. And some of these posters contain direct references to Vault 101 on them. They all seem to contain the same images we saw on the projector when taking Fallout 3's GOAT test in the classroom. Heck, some of the poster's characters are even wearing 101 jumpsuits. So that's it. That confirms it. 
these people must have ties to Fallout 3's player vault. Either they met and traded with 101 dwellers, or are X-101 dwellers themselves, right? Well, sadly, as you can probably guess, we are far from done here, and there's a lot more to cover. First, I should talk a bit about Vault 101's own history, as it's important we're all on the same page going forward, and this will also help us contextualize some of the later theories. Being the player Vault we begin Fallout 3 in, 101 was built by vault Tech with a single experiment in mind. Remain closed forever. Never open, and see how that impacts the society inside. Once the bombs fell on that terrible day in 2077, 100 people entered. The door was sealed, and the experiment finally began. For the first few years, 101 functioned somewhat normally. However, before long, the compound's leader, the Overseer, and his eventual successors, started to take on especially dictatorial tendencies, and the vault started to resemble a police state of sorts. By the time the events of Fallout 3 begin in 2277, roughly 200 years following the Great War, and 10 years prior to the start of Fallout 4, the place was already beginning to fail. While 101 wasn't struggling with resources, it was uniquely equipped with water chips, air filtration systems, and a nearly infinite supply of food, the place was beginning to run out of a diverse genetic stock. Basically, for the last 200 years, the same 100 people, who originally entered and their descendants, had all been forced to, you know, get it on and mate, only with each other. Soon enough, everyone was kind of related, and people were beginning to become infertile. Furthermore, terminals reveal that since the vault's closing, a few of the overseers violated the experiment outright, and secretly opened the door up to send small scouting parties into the wasteland. While most of these parties didn't do much but explore and conduct research, a few scouting parties are said to have gone missing, and some lost personnel. Furthermore, we also know that a small number of people also periodically escaped from the vault into the outside world since its sealing. That said, despite these exceptions, it does seem as though Vault 101 didn't have a lot of contact with the above ground. There wasn't a lot of interaction, but they were violating that mandate. Anyway, eventually one night in the year 2287, 101 would famously suffer a massive radroach infestation. And our player character's father, a man named James, would take the opportunity to flee the vault himself, without telling us. We'd awake the next morning to find the structure in chaos, and our childhood friend Amada would explain our dad's flight, telling us that now the Overseer wants to capture and question our character. From here, we'd decide to flee Vault 101 ourselves, and would make it to the outside world, beginning our adventure in the Capital Wasteland. Though, this wasn't the end for the Vault, by no means. As after we completed a few of Fallout 3's main quest missions, and waited a few in-game weeks or even months, the player could return to the compound, and actually be let in, only to find it in total anarchy. Since your departure, the population split into two factions. Half of the dwellers, mostly the young ones, want to open the door up and finally embrace full relations with the wasteland, starting trade and inviting infinite opportunities, also possibly saving them from that whole genetic collapse they're on the brink of. The older folks, led by the Overseer, want to keep the place sealed off, afraid of the dangers above ground. You, the player, would get to determine the eventual fate, side with the kids, and 101 would finally end its era of isolation, being able to experience the opportunities and dangers of the wasteland. Side with the Overseer, and it would remain cut off, safe from potential outside attackers and disease, though doomed to suffer internal genetic collapse within the next decade or so. There was also a third option for truly evil players. To compromise the Vault's water supply and air filtration systems, making it uninhabitable, and forcing everyone to leave no matter what. After which, numerous Vault Dweller bodies would start popping up across the map, implying things didn't go well. Nonetheless, these are the place's three possible fates. Isolation, openness, or doom. So, understanding the tale of 101, 
What connections can we draw between it and the town of Covenant? Well, I'm gonna be honest and say not many. After spending a few hours cross-referencing the names of Vault 101 dwellers and Covenant citizens, I found absolutely zero links. There isn't even a single person in Covenant that merely shares a last name with a dweller, which pretty much guarantees there's no genetic or ancestral relationship here, especially when you consider the whole problem in 101 was a lack of families. Additionally, no one in Covenant has a Pip-Boy, something you would imagine a Vault Dweller, or their ancestors, would have. If the people of Covenant truly have Vault 101 equipment, they must have gotten it through trade. This is, at least in theory, a possibility. While the Vault just doesn't seem to have been doing enough outside interaction to provide Covenant with all of this gear, at least throughout most of its history, Remember, one of the Volt's possible fates was openness, where the people would finally begin engaging in outside commerce. Maybe that's the canon ending accepted by Bethesda. And somehow, over the ten years between Fallout 3's end and Fallout 4's beginning, the folks in Covenant got their hands on a lot of Volt 101 gear. Well, far from impossible, I honestly don't accept this theory either. We don't know for sure how long the Covenant folks had been doing their whole anti-synth thing, but it seems like this operation is well over 10 years old. Roslyn, who's like in her late 60s or early 70s, claims she's been at Covenant working on the safe most of her life. And honestly, I can't imagine a place like this could have been built and developed its incredible reputation across the Commonwealth in less than a single decade. So, I'm going to go ahead and say that the supposed Volt 101 link just doesn't make any sense. The timelines don't add up. The family names don't add up. It can't be. Well, some people have suggested that maybe Bethesda made a mistake when they were designing those posters we see all over the sewers. Maybe what happened is that they simply copied some Fallout 3 GOAT poster assets and pasted them into Fallout 4 forgetting to remove the direct 101 references. And while these people are still very much connected with a Volt or Volt Tech, it's just not 101. We know Bethesda did this with a few Fallout 3 textures. Maybe they copied these as well, not thinking much of it, and making a big mistake. Of the very few people who seem to discuss this mystery in the community, this seems to be the general consensus. Bethesda made an oopsie. Let's entertain this theory. So, if not 101, which Volt is Covenant linked to? Well, there are five Volts in the Commonwealth. Let's go through each. I'll be quick, I promise. 75 is a popular candidate. It's located beneath Malden Middle School, and its experiment centered around breeding and training a class of super soldier kids. Eventually, the project failed miserably when the kids revolted, murdered the scientists, and fled into the sunset above the structure. Later on, the vault would be occupied by the gunners. Maybe the people of Covenant descend from those rebelling kids. I mean, it's unknown what their ultimate fate was, and frankly, Covenant's really close to Malden. But for one, the people of Covenant don't have Pip-Boys, which they should have if they descend from Vault Dwellers. Additionally, if they came from these super soldier kids, you'd expect them to have an, I don't know, more militant culture. These are people who barbecue, eat pre-war foods, and idolize pre-war luxuries. It doesn't make much sense for them to be the heirs of what were basically Fallout's Spartans. Vault 95 is in the far south of the map, on the edges of the Glowing Sea. It's also currently occupied by Gunners. This one is, I think, the least likely to be associated with Covenant, as its experiment focused on throwing a bunch of chem addicts into a bunker and cutting them off for a few years before all of a sudden revealing to them a big crate full of chems. Terminals suggest Vault 95 society totally collapsed and most of its residents were killed. Some may have managed to flee, but due to their weakened mental state, and again, the distance, I don't think they had much to do with our curious little town. What about Volt 114? This one is interesting, as it's just south of the river from Covenant, 
and its experiment was supposed to involve subjecting a very wealthy and high-class population to abysmal living conditions, and observing how they'd handle such a thing. Problem was, the vault wasn't finished in time for the Great War, and it seems no one ever actually participated. By the time Fallout 4 takes place, it's controlled by some of Skinny Malone's men. Maybe the Covenant folks looted this place before Skinny's boys moved in, and that's how they got all of their gear and copies of the GOAT. This is actually a pretty reasonable theory, though I think the next one is too, and I like that one more. Covenant could also be tied to Volt 111. You see, while most of 111 citizens died in their cryotubes, they weren't the only people living there. Upon being sealed, 111 was also staffed with a team of scientists, janitors, security guards, and of course, an overseer, who were all left unfrozen to keep things running smoothly. Alas, within a few years of being sealed, tensions flared as the security guards discovered that vault Tech wanted to keep them inside forever. They revolted, killed any staff that opposed them, including the Overseer, and fled into the Commonwealth. Maybe these are the true Founding Fathers of Covenant. We have no idea what happened to the guards after they escaped, but perhaps they didn't just immediately get killed. Perhaps they stuck together and founded a community. I'm not sure why they'd take a bunch of GOAT exam copies with them, but it would explain the security armor in Covenant, why it's so faded, it would explain the lab coats, and heck, maybe even why the town's so weirdly obsessed with pre-war life. We know the escape was also somewhere around 197 years ago, so maybe in that time, they just all naturally lost their pit boys or traded them away. It seems possible. Finally, the last vault in the Boston area is the still-populated Vault 81, and the connection here is pretty simple in theory. Covenant people could have just traded with these dwellers to get all of their vault-associated things. 81's overseer tells us they do have some pretty frequent trade with the outside world, and Covenant is literally known as a trade hub. So it's very possible they just bought everything from here. Though, I would wonder why they bought so much Volt Tech security armor when there's better stuff available. Okay, well, regardless, there you go. Each of the five Volts and five possible explanations behind Covenant's origins. Assuming the posters were a mistake. Some of these Volts are less likely candidates than others, but if I'm being honest, all of them seem more likely than Volt 101. But, here's the problem. Turns out, Bethesda didn't make a mistake when they were designing those posters we find in the sewers. Those 101 references on them were made on purpose. Here's how we know. When I first set out to make this video, I too had assumed the 101 references were accidental. Like most others, I believed them to simply be assets ripped from Fallout 3 and mindlessly placed in Fallout 4. But I wanted to be sure of that. So, as many folks on my Discord will likely recall, one Saturday night at 10pm, I got together with a large group of Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 modders, who know a heck of a lot more about internal game data and the creation kit than I do. And together, we set out to prove that the poster assets we see in Covenant were really just ripped from Fallout 3. And, turns out we proved the exact opposite. What we actually discovered was that not only are these posters unique to Fallout 4's Covenant location, not only do they bear unique file IDs, but they even have a few minor changes in their actual graphic design. That suggests Bethesda's artists totally redrew them before even putting them into the compound. This was proof enough, but then we made another big discovery. As everyone probably knows, Vault 81 is home to a classroom, run by its teacher, Katie. Normally from around 8am to 3pm, class will be in session. What this usually means is the kids will all just be sitting in their desks and the teacher will either aimlessly be walking around in the front or be sitting in her chair. Little dialogue is exchanged and it's basically just hours of these people sitting and ruffling in silence. What we uncovered, though, is that there was supposed to be a scene that would play out here, 
where on random days of the week, the teacher would start explaining the GOAT exam to her students, and when doing so, would display some of the GOAT questions and graphics on her projector. This scene was not cut from the game, but it turns out someone at Bethesda accidentally broke it when in development. So it was supposed to play out, but it never does. Basically, the Bethesda team messed up the triggers. Creedy Chameleon, an amazing modder, which by the way, huge shout out to everyone that helped out with this project, was able to fix the sequence. And this is what the scene would have looked like. It's not a whole lot, but honestly, I don't think anyone's ever seen this gameplay before. So I'm gonna show it to you. Notice the go images we see on that projector have their 101 references replaced with 81 references. All right, children, today we're gonna talk about the GOAT. Who here can tell me what GOAT stands for? Generalized Occupational Attitude Test? Very close, Aaron. It's the Generalized Occupational Aptitude Test. The GOAT is used to determine what your best skill sets are and assign you the appropriate career within the vault. What if we don't like it? I mean, I don't want to be stuck here doing security or anything. If you don't like your results, you'll have to take it up with the overseer when the time comes. Lucky for all of you, the GOAT isn't given until you're 16 years of age. Now here are some example images that you'll be shown. Ew! Each image is associated with a question and will have four answers to choose from. The image you're shown presents a situation and each of the answers is a reaction. For example, this image was used in previous tests to ask which position you'd prefer. Pitcher, catcher, designated hitter, or none. You wish the vault had a soccer team. Your results are then fed into the computer to calculate your appropriate career. We don't even have real sports here. It's okay, Aaron. You'll choose the answer based on how you feel. Use instinct and be as honest as possible. Otherwise, that's a sure way to end up in an occupation that's not suitable for you. Any questions? Did the goat say you should be a teacher, Miss Pin? Yes, it did. And I feel very lucky to be teaching all of you today. What if we don't want to stay in the vault? Well, unfortunately, the GOAT only designates careers within the vault itself. If you'd like to pursue something outside of the vault, you'd want to discuss that with the overseer. Ugh, she'd never let me go. Give it time. You still have six years to take the test. A lot can change between then and now. Oh boy, I cannot begin to tell you just how baffled I was when this discovery was made. That this entire sequence of Fallout 4 had, by accident, been hidden by the developers. Nonetheless, Bethesda was paying enough attention to ever so slightly edit and change up the images of Vol 81's GOAT exam to reflect 81 rather than 101, in a sequence that they literally didn't even QA test. Knowing this, it's hard to believe that the Covenant posters were in any way accidental. If they were watching out for this, they had to have known what they were doing. They made them on purpose, and they want us to know that Covenant has a connection to Volt 101. This though, while a conclusion we can be confident in, still brings us back to our original problems. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of room for Covenant story to link with 101s. The names aren't there, the timeline doesn't fit. How is this possible? One potential, though very anticlimactic possibility that could explain these discrepancies, is that maybe we were lied to by the Vault 101 terminals. Maybe there was more interaction between the bunker and the outside world than they led on to prior to the opening of the Vault by the player. Basically, all this time before Fallout 3 started, they were doing trading, just not documenting it. Or, we mentioned all of those exploration teams that got lost and those people who escaped. Maybe somehow one of those individuals had something to do with Covenant. It doesn't seem very likely, given just the sheer number of vault tech security armor, and again, why would exploration teams or escapees have copies of the GOAT, but it's something. Lastly, Perhaps the people of Covenant didn't directly get their stuff from Vault 101, but instead, maybe they found an old Vault truck with a bunch of materials bound for 101 that never made it there, including these posters. Who can forget the always potential explanation of cut content? 
Maybe Bethesda intended to do something more with the Covenant compound. Maybe they wanted to add in more references and enhance this narrative deeper in development, but either forgot to, ran out of time, or just changed their minds. We do know in the game's files that there are various Volt 101 jumpsuits that Bethesda textured and made for the game around 35% of the way through development. They were left unused and never placed anywhere. The Covenant stuff was developed about 40% of the way through dev. Maybe they could be connected. These last two explanations, cut content or finding some old truck or something, are the two theories I personally have settled on. They're the ones I think are the most likely. After spending countless, I mean literally well over a hundred hours on this video, so much time working with very talented and very smart mod authors who helped me understand so much and needing to rewrite my script multiple times after we discovered different things in the game files, this is what I believe. It's either cut content or related to an old truck. Over the last few weeks, I've been emailing and tweeting at various Bethesda Game Studios employees who worked on and wrote for Fallout 4, hoping maybe they could finally offer some conclusion, though oddly they've ignored my emails, at least it seems that way, despite oftentimes replying to me before. So maybe they're making this a mystery on purpose? I don't know. If they get back to me, I will report back to you guys. I'm sorry this doesn't end with any definitive conclusions, hence why this remains what is in my opinion Fallout 4's greatest unsolved mystery. What do you guys think the truth is? Volt 111 refugees? Volt 75 escapees? Remnants of an old Volt 101 exploration team? Leave a comment down below, and if you think I missed something or am overlooking something, please, please, please don't hesitate to tell me and fill your comment with as much information as possible. This was one of those videos I got really, really attached to, so I'm eager to find anything that, you know, substantiates it, or does the opposite. Anyway, thanks so much for watching everybody. Again, a huge shout out to the wonderful modders that helped me make this video. Neshker, ROK Mod, Forcefield, Metamoth, Creedy Chameleon, they were all a huge help. By the way, actually, Creedy Chameleon has uploaded the patch to that Volt 81 classroom sequence. So, if you want to experience that scene for yourself, you can download it on the Nexus and do so. Anyway, thanks again for stopping by, everybody. And I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.